Hi, I'm with Matthew Sprange from Mongoose Publishing, and we're going to talk about Traveller. And the thing about Traveller is, is it's been around a lot of years, and there's been a lot of editions. So this began back in, what, 77? 77, 79, around that area, yeah. Yeah, and it was originally by Games Workshop. Um, GDW, Games Designers Workshop. Games Designers Workshop. Oh, my apologies. Oh, get my, getting corrected. As you can tell, it's a well-researched interview. Um, now, you did your first edition of Traveller from Mongoose in 2008. Can you tell me how that came about? <laughs> um, we have a habit of uh, picking up licenses for games that uh, we played when we were kids. And when I was 12 years old, I, I played Traveller. So you start a games company, I'll give Mark Miller a call, see if we can license Traveller. Made him feel really old when I told him I played it when I was 12. Um, <laughs> but we came to an arrangement and, and um, yeah, we get to publish uh, the game we always played when we were kids. Okay, now... You've done a second edition now, and that came out uh, a couple of years ago now. Yeah. Uh, but in the middle, somebody else published one. What happened there? So that was that just the license moving back, or? Uh, you're talking about uh, T5? Yes. That's uh, Mark Miller's own, <clears throat> uh, Mark Miller's own um, version of Traveller, his, uh, uh, should we say, his definitive view of it. Mm -hmm. OK, so. That's also relatively recent as, as a game. So tell me, sell me on the Mongoose Traveller. Why Why this version? Why, why would I choose this over the guy who wrote it originally? Um, the uh, T5 has been presented as um, a toolkit, um, perhaps for uh, Traveller veterans, people who have been rooted in the um, classic Traveller, the very first edition, as... Um, uh, as it's called now. With our rule sets, we design we design them to be played um, uh, above all else, because there is um, uh, there's a saying amongst RPG publishers, you uh, bring out uh, a new book, 80% of RPG books get uh, bought, get read once, put on the shelf, and never touched again. Um, we always try and put uh, mechanisms into our uh, games that uh, make you want to actually play them, um, rather than just being sat and read. Now, if that's because the art is beautiful, then it's definitely working. Because no. <laughs> I was just having a quick flip through. Um, this is a, a gorgeously produced book. And that's, from my memories of Traveller, that's a big jump forward. Um, it is. Well, with our previous edition, we very much wanted to um, uh, bring across the atmosphere from the original classic Traveller, which is the, the version we always uh, played in the past. Um, we basically wanted to take that classic traveller and um, modernise it, bring it into the 21st century. But we kept the uh, the aesthetics, the uh, the black and white artwork, and so forth throughout that. When we came to this edition, we thought, uh, uh, nah, let's push the boat out. Let's see how far we can go. Now, my memories of traveller uh, do unfortunately uh, include one of the, let's say. Uh, Less less favourable parts of Traveller back in the the old days with the original edition. I once died during character generation. Oh, that just makes you a Traveller veteran. <laughs> Can that still happen? We um, yes is the quick answer. Um, you can um, approach it with uh, with that in mind. We basically put option rules. If you want the the Iron Man. Um, character creation as we call it you can you can do that um but what you tend to get instead if something really bad's happened you get thrown out of your career you lose the benefits for that and you can um uh, accrue quite a few injuries uh in your in your terms of service this can build up a massive amount of uh, medical debt so you can launch yourself into the galaxy and you don't own a thing and you've got people chasing after you wanting their money back because that is one of the great things about Traveller that I always absolutely loved is that the game, the, the character creation is gamified. But as I understand it, that's not the only part of the system that is gamified. Because like me, as I've always been a player of Traveller. I, I never bought the book and ran the game. Mm -hmm. um, so it, the creation of the universe is kind of gamified as well. 
It is. Um, as are things like um, trading. We've always looked at Traveller as being um, a combination of several mini games, which as you say, character creation is the, uh, is the obvious one. Um, but it does allow you to like um, bolt on or prize off the bits you want to use. So um, as you say, the uh, universe creation can absolutely be produced that way. You can start with a blank map, players say, I want to see what's out there. We'll jump three light years in that direction. And the uh, referee can just create everything on the fly and um, the game works very, very well like that. Alternatively, you might want the more uh, standard RPG approach. Here's the sector book, all the worlds are already detailed. Traveller can do either. That's cool. Now, the the settings that I've always played as Traveller, and maybe this is my GM, but it's always felt very close to Frank Herbert's Dune in the the, the sort of tone of, of the setting. Is Traveller very much tied to its background setting or are the players or the storytellers given much more freedom in terms of how they apply the system? Well, the, the uh, official Traveller universe, the OTUs it's called, um, is rooted in the uh, science fiction of the 50s, the 60s, up through to the 70s. Um, but one of the things we've, we started doing with Traveller was divorcing it from um, that universe. So uh, you can still play in that universe, we're still doing all the books for it. But at the same time, you can use it for um, other settings. And we've, um, in the past, we've done, um, uh, what have we done? <laughs> <laughs> No, um, we've done uh, settings like um, Judge, our Judge Dredd role-playing game, use the uh, Traveller rules. We have got um, uh, rules uh, knocking around on our server somewhere that use Traveller for Starship Troopers for Aliens versus Predator. Um, we did Babylon 5 with uh, Traveller rules. Uh, the core rules themselves are very easy to twist and turn into the science fiction setting you want. Hammer Slammers is another one. Um, so yes, um, we present Traveller as being um, used in the uh, official Traveller universe, but we've already split it out into um, uh, different settings. You'll see that in our core books as well. Um, each one is a toolkit. You're not supposed to use absolutely everything there. Um, but if you want um, uh, warp drives instead of the jump drives we've got, you'll find the rules in High Guard. If you want to run around with the equivalent of a bolt pistol and a chain sword, they don't appear in the official travel universe, but the rules for them are in our central supply catalogue. So you can, um, it's like the the mini games, you can just plug in all the bits you need. Now you, you touched on uh, something a moment ago where Traveller's original setting was sort of in the sort of 50s, 60s, 70s idea of the future. And one of the things that always um, sort of struck me is very Traveller-esque. Uh, was the size of the computers needed to fly a ship. Um, so I take it from what you're saying now that we can have handheld computers in Traveller now. We got rid of the, um, that's one of the first things we did when we um, did our first edition of uh, Traveller. Uh, we removed all the size requirements from uh, computers um, so they don't take up space anymore. Well, we just presume they're distributed around, around the ships now. It was kind of awesome in a sense of having a 50 ton computer, but when that wasn't enough to do things and compute things, it, in the modern age, it never quite felt right. So I'm glad you've changed that. Well, it's, it's one of the problems we got with Traveller. Um, I mean, uh, over the next 10, 20 years, we're gonna see some incredible things in this world um, uh, along the lines of um, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, the electric vehicles and so forth. That's all got to be reflected in Traveller at some time because not all of it's there. I mean, we have artificial intelligence, but we've knocked it right up the upper end of the um, uh, tech level system. Um, but I think what we've got, what we're going to be seeing in our world, in our lifetimes, will surpass that. So we're going to need to rejig things somewhat. That's that's the third edition we do that. <laughs> so I'm just going to uh, pull this out now. I'm going to I'm going to come up to. Uh, random page and we'll see what we've got so uh, it's just it's so lovely presented this book I, I really do love it so um, we've got the, the the fifth element section here <laughs> it's I, I'm absolutely blown away by how stunning this is um, 
I did notice though, there's no index. <laughs> Wouldn't fit in. <laughs> really? Really. It's we <laughs> I wanted that rule book you're holding to be under 200 pages with the idea. Yeah, we, we failed totally. You can see that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, with the idea that um, a big, thick rule book, uh, it just scares willies out of people, um, and you you do you really don't need it. But there were certain things we wanted in that book, um, uh, index being one of them. But they have to give way um, uh, for everything else. I mean, we wanted a subsetter in the back, so you've got a place to begin adventuring. We wanted ships to be in there, but um, the Starship Construction System um, got hived out to the High Guard book. Um, uh, that caused some comment at the time. We knew it would. It was just a more sensible place to put it, and it meant the core rule book is a sensible size. Um, but yeah, that's the reason there isn't um, uh, an index page. Couldn't fit it in. Fair enough. So, if somebody who does, let, let's say we've got a viewer watching now who's interested in Traveller, what do they need to play? Is it just this book? I have heard others say that the Traveller Core rulebook is possibly the most complete RPG book you can uh, you can get at the moment. Everything you need to create a universe is in that book. Everything. Um, the other stuff we do that we try to convince people to buy um, uh, adds uh, more tools to do that. Um, it provides more ready-made options. Um, you don't need that. <laughs> Don't don't tell customers that they don't need it. Yeah, so that rule book is everything they'll need to begin with. And um, now, Traveller has because I suppose it's been published by so many different people. Um, some editions I know have had a large amount of errata. So, would I? I just kind of want to make clear, and I I, I checked this beforehand. Your version has a very small errata. Yeah. Um, you you kind of haven't fallen into the trap of other tra traveler publishers um i have got one open here on my computer which, which i won't show but this particular edition of traveler is 71 pages of errata uh there's another one here which is 10. i've seen another one that's 25 pages but you've got what's it two pages of errata if that true um i mean firstly i'll say um we did have it easy because we'd already put, um, produced uh, an edition before that one. So um, it's a lot easier to just update what you've already done. Um, another is possibly, another reason, reason is possibly attitude. There is uh, a sense when you're uh, a games designer, you want to keep fiddling, you want to keep changing things, you keep coming up with new ideas. Oh, that would be good, I'll, I'll do, Let's have um, the space monkeys with laser beams uh, as, as one of the player characters. That'd be great. Um, there's there's a lot to be said for resisting that, or at least not changing the absolute core mechanics um, and hyping off optional ideas into into other other rule books. Um, but that that book you're holding there, we started writing that the day after the first our original rule book got published. <laughs> So that's been in the work for several years then. Oh, yeah. So I'm just checking it. Eight years of, of development then on that. Pretty much. That's, yeah, that's about as long as I've ever held down a job. So <laughs> <laughs> this is not a proper job. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to struggle with this more than I did with your surname. So Pirates of Drenath? Yes. I'm glad you asked me about that. <laughs> um, um, yes, we uh, recently published um, what I might be right in saying is the largest um, single release of a campaign in RPG history. I've been going around saying it's possibly the greatest campaign uh, in RPG history, which is going up against some pretty heady company, I, I do acknowledge. Um, but basically, we got a very talented writer, Gareth Hanrahan, to write a massive star-spanning campaign. Um, we put it in a sandbox setting, and the players get to be pirates, basically allowing them to do what all players want to do in Traveller, but this time we're actually letting them do it. Uh, but it's a massive storyline. There's, um, I think it's four or five hundred odd pages in the, in the books. It's um, a three hardback volume set in a slipcase with a massive 40-inch poster map. Um, 
that will provide possibly years of gaming for Traveller. That's oh. my favourite Traveller book at the moment. 450 pages for a That's campaign the module. We, we did another 160 odd for um, a kind of downloadable content, so you can add more into it, more adventures. Um, uh, we got a whole bunch of um, ready generated ships for players to pirate. Um, obviously, there's something nasty on each ship that they'll come across. Um, but this is uh, this is the product we're most proud of at the moment. And if somebody was to to get that campaign setting, they just just to have it. So that's that's 450 pages, but they would they would still need this, yeah. They would, yes. Okay, so this is what we call the Pirates of Drenax. Um, as you can see, there's three books inside there. Got the gold leaf on the back. Inside, we have, see, Pirates of Drenax. That's the actual campaign book. Um, there's 10 core scenarios inside. So if I got this uh, right, find something more interesting than text on the front. But we carried the uh, production values of the, uh, the core book over. Uh, we have the Trojan Reach book, which contains a complete sector uh, to adventure all the world's detailed. Um, also includes um, rules for the alien Aslan, their society, playing Aslan characters. And we have Ships of the Reach, which are all the oh, unique uh, vessels you'll find, including, of course, the uh, alien whoop, Aslan ships in there and finally we have i'm gonna have to stand up for this we have the poster map which is the entire sector all these worlds holding it the right way up no all these worlds can be uh visited by the players and pirated by them on the back we have whoop, a deck plan of their ship plus uh, a mini board game that the players play when there's a coup on the uh, floating palace. That's when we've, uh, oh, we really tried to push the boat out on that one. I think you've uh, pushed the spaceship out on that one. <laughs> well, we're trying to figure out how to better that now. Um, it's, it's, uh, uh, is there a way to do that legacy? <laughs> I, I don't know. I mean, that's that's quite astonishing. So, give up. Give me a rough estimate. How many years would somebody in, in a campaign group need to play if they met every week for four hours? We well, there's uh, <laughs> there's ten core scenarios in there, um, each around the 30, 40 page mark ish. Um, but we've also presented it as uh, a sandbox setting. So if the players want to uh, go off and do their own thing, the GM has, uh, the referee's already got all the information he needs to handle that. Um, we've um, uh, slipped in um, expanded adventure ideas, patrons uh, that the referee can take and run with when players go into a certain place that's not part of the, um, the actual core of the campaign. You can go off on your own tangents. It's it's all covered. If you think um, think of it like Grand Theft Auto V, you've got the main storyline in there, but you can go off and do your own thing whenever you like. It's same same thing. That sounds absolutely amazing. And, um, and as a, it's um, it's up to uh, the players what they do. If they just want to stick in their single pirate ship and uh, follow a storyline, fine. If they want to be pirates of a massive pirate fleet. The rules are already in there to do that. If they want to stop pirating, go against the people who want them to pirate and set up their own corporations, they can do that. They really can do anything. Now, this is a bit cheeky. Can we have a copy to give away? Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> can we get it signed? Uh, I'd like to say yes, not by the writer. I will get the graphics girls to sign it. They put it together. That's amazing. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Um, we'll sort out the address to send it to afterwards and um, do with it from there. Thank you so much. No that's, problem. That's, that's stunning.
Um, I guess that's it. So thank you very much for talking to us today and uh, hope sales of Traveller do really well and it's hugely successful for you. And um, see you next year. Thank you for having me. Hello, I'm Matthew Sprange from Mongoose Publishing. Please give generously to Child's Play. Thank you.